I got a question. Do you track the parameters in your reef tank after you've done your testing for the day or the week or the month or whatever it is? Do you track that somewhere? Do you put it in an app? Do you put it on a spreadsheet? Do you write it down in a notebook? I need to know because tracking your parameters could potentially save you from a lot of headaches down the road. Let's talk about it. Now, some of the reasons that we might want to do this are to maintain the health and color and growth of the corals in our aquariums. We can see trends in these graphs if we track this stuff and we might be able to prevent parameter shifts or swings over time. And also we might be able to catch some major issues before they come emergency type of problems. But you really can't do this unless you're tracking your parameters. Testing is one thing, and I've covered that in depth on this channel and on my Facebook group and everywhere else. So those of you who've been here for a while, you're probably, probably tired of hearing me talk about testing your tank, but it's very important. So if you're looking for testing info, I have a video on that. Tracking your tank is a whole other ball game. It's like the next step. It's like testing 2.0. Now, if this is the first time you've seen my channel quickly, I will go over the things that we generally test for in a reef tank. Temperature and salinity, you want to pretty much know at all times. pH, nitrates and phosphates, you're probably going to be checking those at least once a week. You can go a little longer than that sometimes. It just depends on your tank situation. And then we're going to be looking at calcium, alkalinity and magnesium. These are the main things that we test for on a regular basis. And what that routine looks like for you might look different than it looks like for me. More on that in a little while. So let's talk briefly about the testing methods that we have for our aquariums and the tools at our disposal. There are test kits of every single type. I do not recommend that you use any kind of a dip strip that you dip in the water and then compare the colors. Those are completely inaccurate. If you have those, if you're trying to use those, they are going to lie to you. They are going to cause you a problem with your tank. Please throw those in the trash and get some good quality test kits. It could make all the difference in whether or not animals live or die in your aquarium. Now that we got that out of the way, there are colorimetric test kits, like your standard, you know, stuff that you put the drops in and they change color. That's what I use, the Salifert ones. There are digital test kits too, which are very nice, the Hannah checkers, but Sometimes they can be a little too sensitive. So just, you know, do your research on which ones of those you may or may not want. The most common ones that people get are nitrate high range, phosphate ultra low range, and alkalinity. Yeah, almost forgot. You can get high end titration test kits for calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium if you're really trying to be super specific, but you don't have to do that unless you're trying to keep really high end, very expensive corals and you want those numbers to be very much on point. For some things like pH, ORP, salinity and temperature, we can get probes that just sit down in the aquarium. Occasionally they need calibration, but they continuously monitor the tank at all times and they report back either onto a digital display somewhere near your tank or maybe even to an app on your phone. And then finally, we have mail in ICP tests where you take some samples in your aquarium and you send those off to a lab. They run them through their machines and they will email you back a report that details out literally everything that's going on in your water from an elemental and mineral standpoint. And some of them have almost a hundred measurements. So that is a rabbit hole that can go very deep. But more to the point of this video, we have to use those good testing measures to get to the point where we can track our parameters over time. It is not the best idea to just test your tank every now and then, or even if you're testing your tank once a week or once every two weeks, and then you jot those numbers down, you take a picture of those numbers, whatever, you throw them away. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is using some of the available technology that we have on the market, or even some old school methods keep a notebook, keep a whiteboard near the aquarium in a closet, or maybe you can open the door, your whiteboard is there, you can write your test numbers down. But even better than that, there are free apps now that you can get. And this is not sponsored. I'm not affiliated in any way with these people. This is just stuff that I use, and I want to pass this on to you. Reef Bay and Aquatic Log are the two that I use the most, and I use them concurrently. So every time I test my tank, uh, I open both apps, and I put my parameters in. 
just in case one app gets removed from the Play Store. These things happen. We, we sometimes don't know why, but building redundancy into my tracking is something that I wanted, just like I've built redundancy into pretty much every system that runs my aquarium. I might be a little extra. I don't know. Probably. That's okay. There are even controllers out there that we can get like Apex and Hydros and GHL that will constantly monitor and test your aquarium. There's some very exciting new products coming on the market soon, like the Maven from Hydros, which is going to test nitrates, phosphates, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium automatically dump the reagents, clean the cuvettes, report it to your phone and all that. You won't have to touch the tank to test this stuff. It's going to be freaking awesome. And I'm excited. Hopefully they sponsor me with one. That would be amazing. But I think you're picking up what I'm putting down here. You need to get to the point where you have a history of testing for your tank. And I don't mean just a couple of weeks or maybe a month. I mean years of history for your tanks. Let's take this for example. Maybe you take a look at your tank. It's been 18 months since you set it up and you've had corals in the tank for eight months. And you wake up one day and you go, man, my corals just, they don't quite look as good as they used to. So you pull up your tracking that you've been testing your parameters every week for the last eight months, right? And you can see a gradual decline in alkalinity over time. Now it's not much and week to week, it only changes by a point or so. So it's very little change week to week. But over the last eight months, your alkalinity has dropped from 10.5 to 6.7 that could be a problem for you. And unless you're keeping those mental notes, like, oh, you know, eight months ago, I remember my alkalinity was 10 then, and now it's 6.7, which some people can do, but some of us can't, you know, everybody's different. But being able to see that gradual decline over time might be a little flag for you that you need to double check that, make sure that that is where it needs to be. Now, I exaggerated those numbers for effect, but it could happen. Another thing that might happen is there may be something like a slow increase in salinity. So eight months ago, your salinity was 1.025 and over the months it's creeped up to 1.028, but it's done it so slow in the refractometer. When you check it, it's very close and the line's a little blurry and so on and so forth. You can see that if you're tracking it, you'll see that graph coming up slowly over time and it might trigger that flag in your head to go, oh, this is probably increasing a little too much. And then you can do something about it. Now, what I don't want you to get into the habit of doing here is looking at these graphs and every time you test, you see a little down and then a little up and a little down and you're trying to micro adjust things. That's not what I'm getting at here. We really don't want to do that until you're at a very high level of reef keeping. And then, yeah, you can make daily adjustments if you want to. But for most of us, it's just not necessary. So let's talk about timing and routine for just a minute. You might be an analytical type of person and you really dig into and enjoy the testing phase of keeping your aquarium. So you might do every other day testing. I mean, the more data you have, the more accurate you're going to be the more stable you can keep things. But that's a little excessive in my opinion. Most things that we test for, for in our tanks, you could test for these things weekly and that is enough to see what's going on. Now, once your aquarium gets to the point where you really start consuming elements, you know, maybe you've got this thing packed full of LPS and SPS, it's looking good and things really start taking a dip after you do your water changes every time. In that situation, maybe you need to go to twice a week or even three times a week so that you can establish a dosing routine. That's a whole nother video. And I've covered that a little bit. You can go find that on my channel. And hey, I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank my channel members who have clicked that join button on the homepage and are directly supporting me and the Reef Rookies mission of respectful reef keeping. I have a $1 tier over there. And if you do that, It'll help me keep this going in perpetuity. So back to testing and routines and stuff. I test my tank weekly. That does good enough for me. In your situation, you may be, you may not can do that. You might be off. Maybe you work offshore, you know, and you're out two weeks and you're back two weeks. Testing every two weeks can be okay. You're just going to want to adjust things much more slowly 
because you're not going to have as much data to go on. And that was just an example to drive home the point that your testing routine is going to look a little bit different than my testing routine, but having a routine is the key. You want to try to have the, the same amount of spacing in between testing sessions every time. That way you can get the stability down because I guarantee you with the accuracy of the test kits that we have, if you test today and you test tomorrow, those names are going to be a little names. Those numbers are going to be a little bit different. Okay. So overdoing it's a problem. That's something you want to avoid, but being on that routine is definitely a good idea. And since I mentioned problems, let's go ahead and jump into some common mistakes around doing this. Rushing your test kits is one of the most common ones and also at the same time waiting too long to check the results. Our test kits are time sensitive. So if your test kit calls for a three minute wait time like the Salifert nitrate test kit does and you check it after one minute because you're in a hurry, your measurement's wrong. Also, if you get distracted or, you know, something happens and the dog jumps through the window and breaks the glass and it runs into your car outside, that's going to be a problem too, because the time has been too long and the numbers are going to be wrong. I come up with crap like that because that's the kind of crap that happens to me in my life. It's absolutely ridiculous. Another one of the common problems that you don't want to make is cross contamination between your test kits. Like the Salifert kits, they come with it here. Look, they come with these little red spoons like this, right? You don't want to use the same little red spoon for nitrates, nitrites, phosphates. That's going to be a problem because you're going to cross contaminate the kits. That's why each one of the kits, they come with their own little individual spoon, their own individual syringes and stuff like that. And you want to keep them together. Check this out. I make these and 3D print them. They're on my Etsy store. The link is in the description below. I also have these for four kit HANA test kits for the checkers. And I have a tray that holds five of the HANA checkers. I'm working on Red Sea right now and working on API for you freshwater folks out there, which there probably aren't any of those watching this video. Maybe there are. Some people do both. You never know. So anyway, if you want one of these, hit me up on my Etsy store in the link below. I'll 3D print them. I'll mail you one. My point to that, though, is to keep things organized. If you're going to do test kits or whatever, like the Salifert's, make sure that the nitrate stuff goes back in the nitrate box and the phosphate in the phosphate and so on and so forth. You get the point. Moving on. Ignoring the recalibration schedules for stuff like salinity and pH and alkalinity probes. That stuff is critical to those instruments maintaining the proper measurements. And if you ignore those calibration schedules, or if you even do the calibrations incorrectly, use out of date reagents or anything like that, it can throw your parameters off. So make sure that you're not doing that. This is probably the biggest pitfall that I see people make with this. And it's, it's testing and reacting too aggressively to what's going on with the tank. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need to react and make a change, right? But this kind of goes back to what I was saying a few minutes ago about testing every day and trying to daily micro adjust the tank. Don't do that. Okay. Not till way later down the road when you have five or six or seven or 10 years experience and you're keeping thousand dollar acropora corals. Then yeah, do that. But now for most of us with a tank like I have trying to adjust this thing every single day, it's probably not the best idea. Stability is the key. And there's going to be an ebb and flow of things, especially like pH, for example. Your pH is going to be the highest when the lights are just about to go off for the night. And it's going to be the lowest when the lights are just about to come on in the morning. So if you have something on your tank monitoring pH, you're going to see this undulating dip and spike valley, peak and valley kind of situation. This is fine as long as your peaks and valleys are within that range. Nitrates can do the same thing. Phosphates can do the same thing. They can sort of undulate a little bit over time. We're not looking for a perfectly straight line here. So don't, don't try to achieve that. Some of the best people in the business, actual like coral farmers have tried to achieve perfection in their parameters. And some of them have actually achieved it for a little while but it only lasts a couple of weeks or a month and then it's gone. And then they chase that stuff for years. Most of them 
from what I understand these days, have given up on chasing that perfect ideology of parameters and they get close enough. And hey, if you've made it this far into the video, drop me a comment that says I made it to the end down below. Let me know what your biggest takeaway from this video was and maybe something else you might want to hear about in the future. Subscribe to the channel because the next video is going to be building a floating aquascape to the sea cardinal tank. And then watch that video on the screen right now. Because I asked very nicely in a soft tone. We'll see you over there.